some of the demands and pressures that you all are facing right now? Deadlines, <laughs> budgets, that's it, deadlines and budgets? Time, what is that? Balance, trying to get that. There's really a lot of things that we're facing, right? There's a ton of demand and pressure. Our economy, the clients are wanting more, they're asking for more creativity. There's short, smaller budgets, there's tighter deadlines. And so in our world, we are continually being asked for more, and that is not going to change. That's one thing that won't change. Isn't that nice, that you're not going to be asked to continue to change and, and be asked to do more? And I think the other bottom one is important. How do we perform at work and still not kill ourselves figuratively doing it? How do we still have a sense of well-being? Where is our edge to be found? And that's where I think emotional intelligence comes into, into play. How do you push through that pressure? So that's really what we're going to talk about today. And I do have a few engagement agreements because I'll have you interact. I will maybe have you interact with me or interact with each other at the table. So a few of mine include be, do tech, which you already did that. We made that easy for you. Be present. Be here. And I'm going to share with you a statistic later on in the class of how little we actually are in the moment at work and in our lives. It's a huge academic in our society. I want you to participate. If you tend to be a little bit more of an introvert, I want you to be a little bit more extrovert and participate more. If you are an extrovert and you're always the one sharing, I want you to pull back a little bit more. That would be me. <laughs> Learn like a new beginner. We're going to talk about living in the gray zone, right? Not being too much of one thing. For the leaders in the room, you've been through this, parts of it before, but if you go into something and learn as if you've never heard it before, it will stick with you. You will learn better. So really open up and learn like a child, like a new beginner. Um, Vegas rule, that doesn't matter too much today, but it might in conversation. Speaking of Vegas, where I learned, what is the Vegas rule? Never right? Vegas. So when you talk in your groups, it's important that you have confidentiality, that you are allowed to talk about things and not be able to go back out and tell other people about it. Escort elephants. What's an elephant? Memory. That's a good right one. <laughs> That's an elephant. So elephants are highly emotionally charged issues, issues that kind of have left emotional residue and something's not quite right. It's the stuff that you need to talk about but you don't talk about, right? The elephant in the room, absolutely. It's the meeting we have after the meeting. <laughs> at the water cooler. There's no more water cooler drilling anymore, but you know that, that, that phrase. Um, pardon? Um, talk about them. So get them out of the room by talking about them. Talk about the difficult stuff because they are emotionally draining, and that's what we're going to learn today. Be open-minded about some of the things you're going to learn. In fact, when you hear the, the term emotional intelligence, the word emotion kind of conjures up what? especially guys, ew, right? Are we going to sing kumbaya? What else do you think of with emotions? Feeling, cooties, cooties, right? Touchy-feely. Yeah. But what we're going to actually find out today is that emotions are absolutely tied to science. We're actually going to learn a little bit of science today. And it's not icky, ooey, crying feeling that's not what it's about. It's actually about performance and how can we push through the pressure? How can we perform even better in times that are continuing to crunch and, and will ask more from us? Um, have fun. And then there's a couple things. Manage your sidebars, especially at small tables. You kind of want to chat about something. Share with the whole table or share with the whole group. No fire hosing. What's a fire hose do? puts out a fire, but how does it do that? It kind of drowns it, right? Pshht. Everything's kind of soggy and not really usable after, <laughs> after a fire. We can fire hose other people's ideas by the way that we um, put it down, or we're like, yeah, that, that's going to happen at Cox, or we've tried that a million times. Any and all ideas are good, and good ideas come at different times. So even an idea that didn't work a year ago could be something that works now because things are changing. Bottom line it, if you're talking, get to the point, manage your storytelling. We all know people who kind of tell stories. No disclaimer. What do I mean by a disclaimer? No rules. Huh? No rules. 
no rules. You know, people, and maybe you've done it, I'm kind of new here, so I'm not sure if I really have an opinion that counts, but here's what I think, <laughs> right? You might think this is a really silly idea, but I want to have a house in New York, I want to have a house on the beach, right? Don't disclaim what you're getting ready to say. Just go ahead and say it. It saves us time in these types of meetings, and it makes your communication much more confident and much more stronger. Two-second rule. If you can wait to talk after someone's finished for two seconds, then you won't tend to talk over people. And ask powerful questions that matter. And I'm not going to go into that right now because you're going to actually learn about that when we talk about emotional intelligence. So what I want to do next is just share with you kind of why emotional intelligence is such an important part of your job and the culture at Cox Media and Cox Communications. I like to say that culture will eat strategy for lunch or breakfast. I don't know what I have there. Breakfast. <laughs> it's a coffee cup any day of the week because you can have the best laid plans, right? But if the people doing the plan are not working well together, if you aren't performing the best you can according to plan, it doesn't matter what kind of strategy we put in place. So culture will eat strategy, and that's why culture is so important. We actually have five what I call pillars, five aspects to what makes a good culture. And this is the work that I've been doing in working with companies. What's missing? What makes good culture work? What makes performance? And I actually have a book coming out in the spring on these five tips. So the first one is values and beliefs. Are you aligned, meaning are you behaving? Are you in your actions aligned with what the values are of Cox, of Cox Media, of this team in here, of your small team? Because values in action is really what culture is. So number one, do you know the values and beliefs? Do you all talk about them? And are you aligned with that? And we're going to learn about matching our actions with our intentions, that that's a key learning, that we judge ourselves by our intentions. We judge others by their actions. So it's really being aligned with those values and beliefs. The second thing is structure. Now, structure could be everything from literally the building you're working in and the work environment the room that we're training in, to your job description. Do you know what it is you're supposed to do? And do you have the tools and technology to do it right? Structure is also about making sure you know the mission, the vision, the goals, and the strategy that everybody is working on. Is everybody on the same page? We need some structure. We need some discipline. We're all kind of kids with really long legs. <laughs> And just like kids need some sort of structure and discipline, we need that in the work environment. And that actually allows us to be more creative. So structure is very, very important. Kind of what's the org chart? Who do I report to? How do we all work together? That's vitally important. The third is relationships. And this is a big part of emotional intelligence. You need to have positive, healthy, fulfilling relationships in the workplace. And do you know the most important relationship in the workplace? Anyone want to take a guess? What two people? Who is it between? The most important relationship? You and your manager. So your relationship with your boss is the most important relationship. And if you don't feel close to your boss, and if you feel like you need to do some more work on that, I encourage that because there's huge productivity issues. And managers and leaders in the room, what kind of relationship do you have? So it's trust as the foundation. It's coaching each other. It's encouraging each other. I love what Tim Sanders calls being a love cat. And being a love cat means that you know who your peeps are. <laughs> These are my peeps, and I'm going to take care of them. And that you share all of your knowledge and that you have great compassion for them. You help them succeed, and you're there for them when they fail. So relationships are vitally important. You've got to learn to be love cats. The next pillar is communication, right? That's, that's the name of your company, Cox Communications. But it seems like communication is just never quite right, kind of like technology. You never quite get there, which is why it's one of the pillars. And communication is everything from how often you're communicated to in a large group to how you communicate one-on-one. -on -one to what kind of feedback you're getting on your performance, what kind of recognition, to emails. I can do a whole day's session <laughs> on
on the power of email and how we don't email very well. So communication is vitally important. And the last is legacy. That in order to create a good culture, no matter what your position is here at Cox Media, think about, Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? What would you want people to say about you if you were to leave or when you retire? What kind of impact do you really want to have on your clients, both externally and internally? And what kind of legacy do you want to leave Cox? How do you want to make a difference? So those are the five keys to culture, and that's the relationships, the legacy, the communication. All of it falls into emotional intelligence. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn really what is emotional intelligence and its value, both for you personally and professionally. Then we're going to learn the science behind emotions. We're going to have a little science class. And then we're going to really delve into understanding, you know, emotions are contagious, aren't they? Do you know it only takes three seconds for the emotional energy in the room to change? Whoever has the strongest emotion, whether it's positive or negative, it only takes three seconds for that energy to change. So emotions are contagious. And you have to ask yourself, do I send out positive emotional energy or do I send out negative? And we all do both. But we're going to learn today our impact on other people around us. And then we're going to learn some tools on how we can manage our mo emotions so that they don't get the best of us and learn how to motivate the right emotions that we want so we can perform ultimately so that you can learn to manage the setbacks and the pressures that you face and also really to have better relationship connection with each other.